Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco for AnyScale's Ray Summit. It's theCUBE's coverage. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Savannah Peterson, bringing down all the action as AnyScale, this fast growing startup, really kind of scaling in the word AnyScale. Ray Summit is attracting all the best machine learning and general AI engineers who are reworking their platforms to take advantage of the foundation needed for distributed computing. We've got Robert here, the co-founder of AnyScale, and Kerti, the new CEO. Uh, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Great to see you Thank again, you. both Thank CUBE you, alumni. Um, so first of all, Robert, I got to say, now that you're here, it's clear you're going to probably be a Moscone next year. <laughs> Great attendance, um, everyone's buzzing. You're attracting some of the best engineers now implementing, not just yes. in open source, you've been doing great there. We've been covering that for years. Now you guys are really scaling up. How does it feel as the founder, co-founder, to be looking at this thing, wow. I mean, it's night and day from comparing today and this year, this conference, to a couple last year, the year before that. Uh, a lot of companies that have been experimenting with generative AI or with AI over the past couple of years are really now reaching production and thinking about how to get more and more value out of it and they're seeing the results. Yeah. That's just incredible. Yeah, and the conversations here in the Cube in the hallway all been great from top engineers from some of the best companies doing yeah. the best work, so congratulations. Kerti, you're a Cube alumni. We've had many conversations on the Cube before. You were doing Intelligent Edge at HP. Now you're at the helm, scaling up the company, a lot of growth with the Gen AI wave. Intelligent Edge is gone, it's now intelligent everything. It's intelligent cloud, intelligent on-prem, intelligent edge, it's all about the data. This is a huge opportunity. It is, and for me, as I said in the keynote this morning, I've spent my time all on infrastructure and each of the waves, and infrastructure is really a massive opportunity. It powers each of the waves. And as I was looking at AI, which is clearly the next thing, and as you said, Intelligent Edge was my previous uh, shtick, and uh, it's intelligence everywhere, and clearly I think the market had the chat GPT moment where yeah. everybody said, wow, look at what intelligence can really do. And to really, and it's amazing that it was built using Ray. Yeah. And so as I looked at it and I went, Ray has to be a massive opportunity and the company behind it, any scale. And as we started to talk, it became very clear yeah. I didn't need to go start another company, I just needed yeah. to join these guys. <laughs> if I can just add, you know, with, there's clearly going to be a massive infrastructure build out for AI, like with any major technology. And with any infrastructure build out, there's a hardware piece and a software piece. Yeah. And on the hardware side, we all know how successful NVIDIA is, yeah. right? But the software piece, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of complexity to rein in that's growing in AI. And that's a lot yeah. of what we're trying to do. Yeah, I want to get into some of the growth things around where the enterprise opportunity is with the care team, but, but I think first, Robert, um, we're seeing you, the kind of people you're attracting on the open source side and also here at the show. These are the tier one alpha engineers. They're working on some of the biggest platforms, large scale, and you know, the cost to deploy is expensive. We're seeing a lot of capex, certainly in the hyperscalers, but even building that enterprise. So they got to keep the innovation ahead of cost, which is one of the things you guys do. But the theme is interesting. It's like all these guys have been doing in machine learning for a while with predictive, from yes. the predictive side. Okay, so they've been kind of, kind of chugging along, doing some great stuff. They got the build out, making the database all work together in the data lake, all that good stuff. And they're setting the table, bringing in great people, and all of a sudden, boom, Gen AI hits. <laughs> so you now have Gen AI applications which is going to power the agentic apps coming around the corner. So you got this programmable infrastructure, it's distributed. It's not just a developer problem, this is an engineering thing. You guys saw it early. What's your reaction to that? How would you add commentary to that? Because I think this is really what's going on is that those engineers who have been doing the machine learning now have major step yeah. function value opportunities. They all say raise key to their success. Uh, expand on that. Yeah, well a lot of the people that we work with are the AI platform engineers, the infrastructure engineers, the people who are providing AI capabilities throughout their company, right? And really enabling yeah. all the other teams to move quickly. That's, those are like some of the main Ray users. And these people have been supporting AI workloads for a long time, right? They went through a large uh, potentially migration to enable deep learning, right? Beyond just predictive models. Now they're enabling generative AI. And so, like you said, the, the potential of generative AI is, is so much higher, right? Every organization sees how they can integrate this into the heart of their products. But um, what the, the, one of the challenges there, these organizations are running into is they're running into a lot of fragmentation across tooling, right? They have um, they have generative AI and they have classical machine learning, right? They have 
potentially cloud-based compute, they have on-prem compute. They have uh, one accelerator, another accelerator, and the last thing they want is a different tech stack for each of these combinations. Because the more different combinations they have to support, um, the slower the velocity is going to be. And they care about velocity, right? And so a lot of, when we work with these people, a lot of what we're trying to solve for is how can we reduce that fragmentation, provide a flexible yeah. solution that gives them the ability to you know, unify classical ML, generative AI, and really just move so much faster. Yeah, you know, interesting enough too is that the DevOps side of the equation is still growing. That's another little dimension in here too. You have now microservices <laughs> and Kubernetes kind of standardizing. Yeah. That's going to create more platform engineering opportunities to kind of intersect with the machine learning challenge, hence yeah. the opportunity. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the personas that we work very closely with is this ML platform engineer. And then one of the things we announced um, earlier in the keynote today is the ability to deploy any scale and bring any scale managed and optimized ray clusters to any Kubernetes cluster, right? So any, if you have a yeah. Kubernetes cluster, we can run on it. And uh, that really caters to this platform persona. On the other hand, you have their, those platform people have internal customers who yeah. are data scientists, machine learning researchers, yeah. people building models, people who want to have nothing to do with Kubernetes, yeah. right? They just want to think about PyTorch and Hugging Face yeah. and their Python code, right? And so, yeah. in addition to catering to these platform people, we really need to provide like a high velocity, yeah. great developer experience for the actual machine learning people. Yeah, the old expression, when Kubernetes is boring, it has its yeah. Linux moment, it's standard. Kirti, this is a growth opportunity. I want to get into the keynote in a minute, but I want to get your thoughts because you, you've seen a lot of the commercial successes where you got to take these emerging trends and bring it to the average, I won't say average enterprise, <laughs> maybe you know, Uber's not an average enterprise, but I think the customers here are a proxy to what we're going to see on the enterprise as they start realizing yeah. cloud operations will be fully distributed, powering these new apps. They got to get the table set. How do you see that growth opportunity and where are we on that progress bar? Scope that for us. Yeah, I think so far, if you think about classical AI, it's been, it's had its growth moment. It's probably a decade in the making, as you said, predictive models and so on. So a lot of the engineers that we've talked to, they're already serving hundreds, if not thousands of models, right? So, and generative AI comes along, and of course the hype cycle is yeah. through the roof, <laughs> and they're all trying to respond to that, but the truth is that it's a hybrid world, right? People are going to be serving their classical models, and adding generative models, and this is true for enterprises too. The difference though, as you said, is the AI ML platform engineers are a rare breed. There's not too many of them out there, yeah. and many of them are concentrated in, the, in, this, in this city, for, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. So the, the real enterprise challenge is yeah. how do you take that expertise yeah. and put it out there, and that's what we see as the any scale opportunity, honestly, because if you're really smart about ML platform yeah. engineering, you can take open source, and build a platform, and very few organizations have the yeah. ability to do that. Most people don't, and so what we see as the commercialization opportunity is to take that, offer it to the managed service, and wrap it, honestly, around professional services, yeah. so customers can take it, so take their business problem and really come up with a real solution, yeah. as opposed to just tinkering with tools. Yeah, yeah. And a couple of forces there, you got the market forces of service, with operating leverage with the platform, but you also got a lot of PyTorch, a lot of Python engineers out there too. So you're democratizing the ML engineer platform to make it easier to come in. Did I get that right? I mean, you want to, um, well, there are a lot of people working with PyTorch, working with Python. They know how to program on their laptop. They know how to define the model and all of these types of things. What you want to do is enable those people to take advantage of all the compute resources in the cloud Right, take advantage of the ability to scale, get, use more data, get results faster, but without having to solve the underlying distributed systems challenges. They, don't, they should not be thinking about yeah. um, <laughs> managing Kubernetes clusters, they shouldn't be thinking about yeah. scheduling or fault tolerance or, or how do I like, move data quickly yeah. from one place to another. Yeah. Right? These are the kinds of things that, um, I mean, challenges we were running into when we started Ray, and that's what, why we started yeah. Ray, because exactly to yeah. solve these kinds of problems. Well, you got a fan base for sure. Let's get into the keynote. What was the key themes there? Give us the highlights of the keynote. So I think uh, it was very clear we wanted to tackle the complexity associated with the growth in AI. And so we built out this theme of a complexity wall that is uh, being built up because of the proliferation of all the number of tools that are out there. And uh, the solution, of course, to that is to create a unified compute engine that can take all this mess and try to simplify this into a unified platform. 
And um, that, that was the main theme, and I think, yeah. so if I, and I'll, I'll have uh, you know, Robert actually expand a little bit more on the computer engine, yeah. Yeah. but the feedback I received was that the problem statement absolutely resonated yeah. with everybody after the keynote. You could see people yeah. reach yeah. out and say, yeah. man, you nailed it. Yeah. And when that yeah. is, that's very, not very common, honestly. It was great to yeah. hear that confirmation back from everybody that was in the room. Robert, I unpack the compute engine again. People want to go fast. They don't want costs to go out of control. We're seeing people loving the Ray right now. Yeah. Uh, give us your take. Uh, I mean, the, the starting point is exactly what Kirti said. Complexity is skyrocketing, right? The complexity of uh, scaling data, new data types, data modalities, scaling compute, different accelerators, all of these types of things. And to, to really rein in this complexity, you do need an AI compute engine. Uh, and that's what Ray is, that's why we're building Ray. Now, what is an AI compute engine? It has to solve a handful of core compute related tasks. That's so managing the underlying compute resources. Think um, uh, things like auto scaling, selecting instance types, spot instances, on demand instances, handling hardware failures, all that type of compute management. Then there's data management, like which is everything from optimizing the data movement through um, communication frameworks like Nickel, RDMA, leveraging shared memory, handling large data. Uh, so compute management, compute resource management, data management, and then workload execution, right? Workload execution yeah. is about actually scheduling, executing the core tasks that make up the AI workloads. That has to be flexible to support a variety of AI workloads. It has to be, um, has to be fault tolerant, it has to leverage accelerators. So, these are some of the core building blocks of an AI compute engine. You also have other pieces, yeah. um, but this is what is really needed in an AI compute engine to uh, rein in the overall complexity of AI. What's been some of the feedback uh, here with Ray? What do they like about it? Why are you guys so successful? How would you explain that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is the flexibility, really being able to support not just one specific AI workload, but the huge variety of AI workloads that you see. The flexibility to support deep learning, classical AI, and you know, generative AI, the flexibility to support uh, every cloud as well as on-prem, the flexibility to support every hardware accelerator, right? And so, uh, and the really, if you think about the alternative to that, the alternative to having this flexible framework is to have separate frameworks for all of those yeah. different things. That leads to huge fragmentation, yeah. leads to slowing down your shipping. Yeah, and right? more staff too, more staff yeah. creep, yeah. less leverage, yeah. I mean. I mean, another uh, big theme we've seen here, and one reason people like Ray, uh, is for unstructured data processing. Of course, we all know Ray is used for, widely for training, it's used widely for inference, but the fastest growing use case of Ray that we see today is unstructured data processing and what I would call AI data processing. Essentially using yeah. AI to read your data, reason about your yeah. data, draw conclusions. This is increasingly how businesses are leveraging their data to get insights. Yeah, and people are starting to figure out it's not just train once, you got to come back to it, look at recency, look at the quality of the data. I mean, real time apps Absolutely. need all this. Yeah. This is a core uh, <laughs> discovery we're seeing. Of course, inference is the killer app, but reinforced learning's right around the corner. You got um, causal AI coming right around the corner. Starting to see the progression. Is there any opportunities that you see from the challenges now that you're tackling? Share with us some of the things that you're thinking on the roadmap. What's been some of the requests you've been getting? What are some of those new things that connect the yeah. dots? I mean, a lot of it is doing, taking the, the core things we're trying to do and just doing them really well. So if I think about our roadmap, a lot of it is performance related, making things more yeah. reliable, more scalable, yeah. faster, cheaper, and just going very deep in that direction. I would say the other direction we're going very deep is overall developer velocity, the developer experience, like observability tooling. If you're running into a bug, can you debug faster? That's where people spend all of their time. If something goes wrong, yeah. what went wrong? How do I answer that question? Like, so enabling companies to ship AI features and products faster and faster and removing the risk around that for them. What are you most excited about right now? Looking at where you are now, the progress you've made, um, oh. This is real, life's happening. <laughs> yeah. um, the growth will continue. Again, it's getting more complicated. Hopefully that gets easier. Um, how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible to see what people are building on top of Ray yeah. and Anyscale. Like it's, um, Runway today in, in, their, in their talk talked about building some of the world's best 
generative video models. Like the work they're tr doing is truly mind blowing. Yeah. Tomorrow we're going to hear from um, Recursion talking about how they're using Ray for drug discovery, right? Instacart, yeah. how they're using generative AI in all of their products. There's the, the, the stuff people are building on top of any scale yeah. is truly amazing. Yeah, there's a whole thing we could do where yeah. companies that had that were built and went public or got financed now become a feature of the platform, the system architecture that's developing. Kirti, what's the growth strategy? Because you now have a company that's scaling. Um, you got to do all the blocking and tackling, chop wood, carry water. I mean, you got to stand up, go to market. Um, yeah. On the product side, you got a great community giving great feedback, so that's going to change. You got a lot of things going on. What's the plan? Yeah, I think the key to all that is first taking the power of Ray and bottling all that into a managed service, which is what we announced today, the AnyScale platform, because it gives us a window into how customers are using Ray, how to support them, do the debugging, do all the hard work on behalf of them, right? And so yeah. that becomes our exchange modality mm -hmm. between our customers, enterprises, and us. So that was step one, to actually launch a enterprise class managed service. Step two is really meet the customers where they are, which is the go-to-market engine. Yeah. And it is, uh, a lot of these customers are large customers requiring direct touch. So we're building yeah. out a go-to-market engine with, with, with a direct sales force. We also are partner oriented, especially we need partners who are deeply skilled in being able to help customers write the code, and so it's professional service opportunities for partners to be able to take a use case, take a large image data set and do yeah. something intelligent with it on Ray. So we need lots of Ray developers out there, so we're <laughs> going to have a development <laughs> partner program for that. And those are, I would say, the main components of what it takes to go scale, and we need a large field engineering force to be able to scale with it. So besides the great work that happens in San Francisco in our offices around engineering, we really need a lot more people out there to meet the customers where they are. Okay guys, I know you have a hard start. I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. And again, thanks for having us. I know next year it's going to be big. How many people are here at this event? You guys have stats on uh, Almost 2,000 people yeah. at this event. Yeah, okay. So it's a pretty <laughs> incredible turnout. Almost <laughs> double from last year. I remember when Amazon Web Services show was like this. Uh, it's soon to be big. Final question for you, there's folks out there right now looking at things like the AI PCs coming around, you mentioned hardware, you got the server markets changing radically into clustered systems. Obviously NVIDIA's kind of democratizing that supercomputing kind of thing. You guys got the Ray platform. I mean, managed service is huge. Ecosystems develop around open source on the developer side, partner side. So you got the perfect storm of kind of like this coalescing nexus of, of growth. What is the white space that you can share with folks out there from a partner standpoint? And if I'm an AI platform builder, engineering my system now, what should I think about? So partner, question, what do I got to do to engage? Where's the white space? Where's the value connection? And then two, I got to get, I got to start getting going here, settle the platform and start standing up new infrastructure to carry me into Gen AI. Yeah, I think we are frankly very, very early in this whole decade of AI. I mean, I think it's probably year one or year two. And so if you think of every major wave in the past and if you have a partner lens on it, whether it was internet, dot com, mobile, cloud, each one represented a huge opportunity to serve customers. And it brought with it its own unique yeah. set of applications and expertise. And so for partners, it's the opportunity to go and talk to customers and say, hey, as Robert said, there's a lot of ton of proprietary data. It's not just foundation mm -hmm. models. It's proprietary yeah. models built on proprietary data. Yeah. How do you build that and create real enterprise intelligence? And enterprises have the imagination. They don't necessarily have the people to do it for them. So that to me is really where the opportunity is for partners to come in, get trained on the one hand on tools like Ray and our managed service, and on the other hand, understand what the customer use case is and put it together. It requires yeah. expertise, it requires skills. We are here to help them get trained, <laughs> but they need to be out there talking to customers. Robert, AI platform, I'm going to build them. I got a team, they've been working yeah. on some stuff. I got to start looking at the roadmap, 20 miles stair to the future, what's my plan yeah, look I mean, like? Look, like here as you said, this is year one or year two. Things are going to change rapidly. You need to architect for flexibility. You need to architect, you can't get locked in to a specific framework, a specific, um, uh, cloud or a specific hardware accelerator, there are going to be many options, there are going to be new models, new research coming out all the time. If you're going to enable your teams yeah. to take advantage of the latest AI capabilities, which you need to, yeah. because AI is very likely the key to your competitive differentiation, yeah. then you need to architect for flexibility, and this is where we try to work with our customers yeah. to make sure they're using Ray, they're using AnyScale, 
they can immediately take advantage of the absolute latest advances uh, yeah. just out of the box. Yeah, I mean, on that point, just to kind of chime in here, we're back to heterogeneous networking environments, servers, systems. Yeah. I mean, heterogeneous is the way to go. Yeah. Choice, optionality. Absolutely. Multi-cloud, on-prem, yeah. it's everything all at once, and that's really yeah. what partners yeah. need to embrace and every customer needs to embrace. I mean, even on the hardware side, you know, we, yeah. in the, we had a previous generation of big data processing systems that yeah. were CPU based and handling large data. Now we have a, a separate uh, set of AI specific training systems yeah. and inference systems that are you know, GPU based, but what we're seeing going forward yeah. is really combining those two. We're seeing AI workloads that are simultaneously very GPU intensive, but also very data intensive. Um, you need CPUs and GPUs. Yeah. So this is yeah. a brand new regime. It's a whole systems thinking revolution back <laughs> again. It feels like we're living in the 90s again. It <laughs> is, that's why I'm back here. <laughs> Congratulations, Robert. Kirti, awesome opportunity for you. Again, awesome, we're big fans of any scale. Again, we want more, faster, but not have cost overruns. Siloed environments. Absolutely. Too many people that you can't hire. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thank you very thank, much, John. Yeah, thank okay. you so much. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, here with Savannah Peterson at Race Summit 2024. Thanks for watching.